Lost in the Groove segment. Like in, in any of the days, like there's been so much that's been going on just between the two of us. And not even in the past two weeks. I would just say, God, in the past couple of months, it's just been one thing after the other. And almost like I have a life. Yeah, isn't it surprising? Like we have lives. Crazy. Didn't used to. No, and I oh my god. I literally moved a few days ago. Like, <laughs> yeah. This is the new studio, everybody. Um Yeah. I mean I'm officially back in the closet, baby. Back in the closet. Fuck yeah. <laughs> David's recording studio is in a closet. Yeah. His, his new recording studio is in the closet. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> and he is he's returned to the closet. Mm-hmm. Uh, you never expected to come out of a gay man's mouth, but hey, happens once in your life. <laughs> well, the funny thing is he absolutely loves the closet. Honey child, <laughs> I make love the closet. Let me tell you, the closet is my domain to be my own dominatrix. It can be kind of a comfy place. <laughs> it can. Um, well, the thing is... <sighs> I'm not we, used to seeing you with like white walls. That's just odd. I'm like, what is this whiteness surrounding <laughs> David right now? I've never seen anything like that. It's it's really it's strange also because um we've we've generally kept a pretty professional quality regards to the podcast. I mean, we both like in, invest our own finances and to be able to make this. Um and I think that's something that's like important. It's not that like we're having a great conversation. We're talking back and forth, you know, it's also where like it's good to listen to, you know, it's enjoyable to the ear. It sounds good. Um, but yeah, I just, nah, I don't, I'm not, I'm not the type of dude that likes crunchy sounds, bruh. The like, crunchy sounds are nah, bruh. What do you mean not by cr cr crunchy sounds? Like bad quality shit. Like I, I, you know, like there's some songs oh, that I. Oh, you, you're talking about like some podcasts. The, the sound quality is bad. Even like some singers, it's just. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the, sometimes people can be bad singers, and it can be like good because it's like unique. But other yeah, it's times like launchy it's almost. Plain bad. Yeah, but. I mean, it's like this is definitely like going to be an adjustment for sure. But the cool thing, though, is being back in the closet. Why? Why are you back in the closet, David? Well, I had to move in with my mom. I had to move back in my mom. But like, there's a variety of reasons. Like, my mom has like been dealing with mobility issues, so I have to like be here. Like, I help make dinner and clean up and stuff. Um, I don't. I get free rent. You know, I I'd still have to pay for some stuff, but. I had to move, you know, my, my apartment yeah. was infested with roaches and my landlord raised my rent insane, like to like $1,500, uh, which to some people are like, that's not a lot of money. Well, no. listen, bitch, for me, that is a lot of money. It's unreasonable. I don't, I honestly don't think that people should have to pay more than like a thousand to 1200, like at, at most, like, unless you want to live in some luxury. You know what I mean? But, like, for just, like, a home, like, an apartment, we're not even talking a freaking house, you know? Like, it's, like, you're cooped up with a whole bunch of other people inside of a big-ass building, and it's, like, that's part of the reason that you got roaches is because there's all these other people living around you. And it's just, like, man, it's getting so nasty how much they're charging people for shit, but yeah. I'm sure I'm just preaching to the choir no, with you, all of you, our listeners, you know what I mean? Like, we all know are. how hard it is. Oh, for and sure. And if, if you are for a sure. person that doesn't know how hard it is, like, man, that's pretty cool. My heart cool. goes out. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. I I would suggest that you do some reading and some research and maybe try and talk to the people around you um, and see if there's anything you can do to help people out. Because if you're not feeling any struggle right now, like Jesus. I'm not saying you got to do like a whole lot, but at least like try to talk with the people around you that you care about. Cause somebody's having trouble. Someone yeah. that you care about is having oh. trouble. I, you know, I, the thing that like opened my eyes the most were Gen Xers because, you know, I've had conversations like even them 
telling me when they were my age that they went through the same struggles, but they had more flexibility in regards to housing, in regards to food costs, in regards to moving freely. <clears throat> so, great example, I met somebody that was around my age and was also like financially struggling in the 80s. And at a very young age, being able to like have the ability to have your own apartment at a hundred dollars and being able to have a job that doesn't pay you an accessible amount of money, but it makes you five hundred dollars a month. I know, like my dad worked over the summer and bought a car. Like, I can work every summer and it'll never afford a car. Like, not a nice one. He bought a freaking muscle car back when he was a high schooler. Like, it, yeah, people don't understand what it is that we're dealing with. I just, I don't think that anything can be such a drastic change without it being intentional. Yeah, I, I, the thing is, it's not about dwelling on the past and saying the past is, that's not what I'm trying to get at. What I'm trying to get it get at is there were options available in the past, whether it be great or not. There were those options. The reason why there is a lackluster of less options is because you have large corporations that have the ability to buy up tons of land. They have the ability of buying tons of companies. They have the ability to control the way prices and things that are done. And I'm not trying to get like political or anything. It's just use your common sense. Why do you think food costs so much money? Why do you think housing costs so much money? Because it's making somebody else richer. I was informed today that eventually we'll have like this absolutely insane food shortage. Um, and In about seven years. Yeah. And and apparently, farming won't happen at some point. Like there, we're, there's like we're running okay. out of topsoil. Yes. So this is I don't watch the news, um, and I don't listen to these kinds of things that you're talking about right now. Um, and I'm talking about what I do is I listen to the people around me. And I hear the things that they say, and then I come up with how I feel about it. I don't actually need to be informed um, by the news. Um, Neither do I. Agree. In, in any way whatsoever. Um, I contribute still. Yeah. I'm not a non-participating citizen. I still participate in But I, I protect my energy that way, and I think that a lot of people don't really understand it um but it's just like i don't i don't participate in it and i i hide from it and uh, this this message that i heard is is someone talking about the environment the topsoil is going away we're not gonna be food you know like i don't know how much of this people have been reading and listening to and stuff like that but uh, it sounds really really stress inducing like that information that, is not something that like a human trying to do their nine to five really needs to know about like i'm sorry but like it's too much on a basic it, person like you can't do anything about it no, what are you, you gonna do to change okay, the topsoil ag okay like, agree agreed it's agreed. too much pressure on a regular ass person to think that all their food's gonna go away in seven years like you can't okay. be doing that to human beings scaring them that much is fucked up I get that. That's but my the, opinion. <laughs> no, I, I hear you. But I think they're trying to scare people. I but do. To, but, to your, but to your point, it's where there's the other side. And the other side is... There see, I don't, I don't see either side. And that's why my opinion is not a conservative's opinion. It's not, I'm not, it's not anyone's opinion. I'm not, I'm not opposed to like global stuff. I, I agree with you, David. I'm just trying to explain myself. I'm not arguing no, with you. No, I, I, understand, saying, I like, understand that. But I'm trying to say like, I, I will say things that could possibly align with a conservative or a Democrat. And I don't, 
I don't align with any of them. I it's an outside perspective. I'm saying like this is stressful to human beings and they don't need it. I'm sorry. Go on. I'm sorry. What what I was trying to get at is there are individuals in the world such as farmers, scientists, doctors, among other type of people that see the issues and they're trying to do the change <clears throat> on their own. And the thing is, when you think, oh, you know, on individual in in scale, what possibly can one person do? The thing is... Yeah, I mean, awareness is a good thing. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I can always contradict the things that I say, you know, like, it's good for me, people to be aware, but I also think it's let, just let me, like... Let me, let, me just, let me just finish this. Just give me one sec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even to the point where, like, my mom's doctor that she has out here, which I believe is a nurse practitioner, she is by far an example I would use for somebody in the medical field. Okay. I'm I'm going to I'm going to just give this an example, okay? When she was going through like our first evaluation cuz I was a new patient. She was asking like <laughs> what type of fitness? This is what honest questions she was asking like what type of fitness do you do? <coughs> have you found any workouts that you like? Um have you found yourself to have a balanced diet? How's how's your stress level with work? They were not just questions. Her, her as itself as a medical medical professional understands that her job is not just to give people pills. She generally wants to help her patients and see all the possible ways that she's been taught that she can help people to better help themselves. Like I even brought up when she was talking about like with workouts, I said, I, you know, I've been doing Pilates. She's like, oh, that's amazing. I do them too. That's great to hear. Those little things, those incredible people, which there are plenty, i that's what I look forward to, and that's what I want to focus all of my energy on. Not on, we have 68 or whatever the number is of topsoil left. You know what? That, like you said, that's scary as shit. And a person that's working 9 to 5, like, I don't need to know that information. What I like <laughs> to know... like kind of like doom. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I, I think that the responsibility does fall on the corporation. Like, it's like, yeah, okay, I can I can recycle and I can, you know, use a refillable water bottle and all kinds of things that I can do. But, like, the impact that the larger corporations can make is, this is like, really big. And not to mention they have a lot of profit and money. I mean, the, the amount of profit that they're turning off of off of the impact that they're making um, is a big deal. I it when is. I took an English course, um, I, people don't realize that Doc Martin is extremely harmful to the environment um, in multiple ways. Uh, they're the way that they tan and color their leather is extremely detrimental. We're all about the artist. That is the whole purpose of this podcast, period. And you have a really valuable tool. You can share this with artists, people that are creative, someone that can uh, enjoy this podcast and really enjoy the experience of Lost in the Groove. So with that, let's jump back to today's episode, shall we? To the ocean. Um, they dump tons and tons of chemicals, dyes, Everything that they use to dye their leathers and textiles, it's all just dumped into the water. Um, and there's no information as to what coastline it's on. Um, but it's not in America. And nobody gives a fuck. It's like, Vietnam. But it's like how many people are out there bitching about the climate walking around in Doc Martens? Like, they're fucking retards. I'm sorry, but I'll never buy a pair of Doc Martens ever. Like, yeah, they look pretty. I, 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 I do own, own you, a pair of Doc Martens. If you Mart own a Doc Martin, but you don't bitch about the environment, then it doesn't apply to you. If you're going to go around <laughs> yeah. bitching at everybody else and acting like you're some type of god 
like when it comes to the environment, which no, none of us are. Yeah. None no. of us are. No. Even and even even the person who is like really, really, really environmentally friendly isn't because of what we are. Like our we're whole limited. society. Yeah, like we're limited. You can't yeah. I mean I the carbon footprint of the phone. I don't know all the statistics, but it's really bad. And it's like, we've all got one. Like, but that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying is like, when I have that experience with like that, that doctor, or, you know, for example, I learn about a farm, a local farm that uses regenerative farming, you know, and it has like free cattle. And I've been to some of these farms and they're some, they have some of the coolest cheeses, by the way. Like they have some of like the, you know, you kind of like come out and they have like a little store where you could like sit down. You can try like the cheese. Oh, get it. It's, am- it's amazing. So I love those places because like, yes, it's a small, tiny farm that can't feed like millions of people. But it's something that you could like look forward to. You're like, hey, you know what? Like this person's doing a difference and it's super cool. And, like, I appreciate it. I agree. Has there ever... I mean, you're pretty good with economics. Has there ever been a time in the past where corporations seemed to kind of take everything over and they had to reverse it so that it could kind of start going the other way? Like, they, like, made changes so that it could kind of, like, like not just be all corporation? People tend to not realize that... From World War One, which was 1914 to 1918, from 1918 to 1939, the world dramatically shifted 180, literally 180 degrees in the opposite direction. You went from depression to chaos. I mean, there was, a, sorry, there was effluenza epidemic. Then there was the there was depression, and then you have Nazi Germany, and then you get all the way to World War II. Then something happens, which is very interesting. From 1947, from 1947, the entire United States at its whole completely shifted. And it's because of the military-industrial complex, because of so much that was put into the war effort what was left was these shell manufacturing companies across the United States that had thousands of employees that had no jobs. Mm-hmm. So they took chemicals and products that were used during the war efforts and made them into household goods and products. Yeah, like Ziploc bags and saran wrap. Correct. And then, yeah. aluminum foil is another. Yes, believe it or not, aluminum foil is another one of them. Clorox is another chemical one of those. Uh, there are dozens. Dozens. Yeah. Uh, saran wrap, I think, is probably one of. I mean, if you've ever. I mean, you've worked. You have. You've worked in a kitchen. You know how much saran wrap gets used. Like, it's just like. I will tell you, as a person that's worked in the culinary industry for se- <laughs> for almost seven years, have, be very careful the restaurants that you choose. <laughs> <laughs> very careful, dude. Even some of the nicest restaurants were like, oh, those rotten. are the worst. They're the worst. The actually, if you want a good fine dining experience, here's a little trick: find the place that's the furthest away. And has the smallest table setting. That's the trick. Usually those places will be like connected to a vineyard. They'll be in an old house. Um, They'll be like, for example, in a historic district. Those restaurants, and I've worked in one of those before, they specialize in what's called fresh menus. I don't know if you've ever been to a restaurant like that. They have seasonal menus. There's one out by Malibu. I stopped in. I mean, if you go kind of out by like Malibu Wines, like yeah. where all the that stuff is, there's it's a little w- Italian trust me, restaurant. It's worth the four hundred and seventy five dollars. Like I, I didn't pay for it. No, I know, uh, but like if you have the money, <laughs> that's where you want to spend your money at. It's good food. I had nochi for the first time. I'd never had it. Ooh, I didn't know wow. what it was. You gotta yeah. talk about that for a second. I want to hear this. How was it? I mean, it was absolutely gorgeous. I, little potato balls. I absolutely love potatoes, and I'd never had them in the that kind of way dumplings. before. 
They're in the most so beautiful good. ways. Yeah, I had a nice little glass of wine. I asked my server like what would pair correctly. Ooh, okay. They brought that out. Um, and I remember my date, who was my boyfriend at the time, he got like really, really nice food. And of course it comes like with like a salad and you know, they put like all the nice like little things in it. And I don't know, we had a really great time, but it was small. And there's hardly anyone else there. And yes, this the actual tables themselves were really, really little. And kind of like the restaurant is in like two layers. There's like an upper, upper area. And then there's and a then lower like, level. Yeah. But it's like really, really small. Um, and they treat you really special. You know, I could definitely see like wanting to go back like again and again because it it felt special and it felt memorable and it there's a different pace in that type of restaurant. Like you can, I could feel um, like when I go it's into like a, a really nice restaurant, like I've been to like Michelin star restaurants, like, and there's Chris has been around, honey, ladies and gentlemen, this lady <laughs> has been around girls. And so I, Pack they've been like really, really nice. I don't in good shape. carry designer bags. Um, <laughs> and so, I mean, there's, there's a, yes, it's very, very classy. Yes, it's fine dining. Um, and it, it has a uppity fine dining, high energy feeling to it. But this, you can go get a fine dining experience, but it not be that uppity, like high, like energy feeling. It really is truly relaxing. Um, it, it's yeah. kind of like the flip side of that too is like if you're ever trying to look for cheap options here's the rule of thumb you go to the place that's the most popular in town maybe that's not a good idea try to find the place that is the most welcoming like honestly like there are places like for example there's a Chinese place that was not far from my house and it was the most welcoming place like the guy, the employees there, like they all coordinated and worked together as a team. Like the place was super clean. Like it looked like, like I'm not trying to be racist right now, but like that Chinese lady scrubbed those, de those floors with fucking like three bottles of Clorox every night. Okay. And it was just amazing to go in there and get food. Just like earlier, really, like she put yeah. like a lot of energy into they all, it. Like you could see like the family put a lot of work into and it shows it does like you it's can one of the best it. chinese places oh i love that place oh i miss like a real chinese restaurant i feel like you know i mean does anybody else feel that because like we east that, coasters don't really happens. deal with that well no i'm saying that's what happens when all the corporations start like screwing out all of the like small businesses is yeah. I don't get any authentic food anymore. But I mean, th you know, what's really nice is like Koreatown in LA, like it lets the culture survive, like regardless of like all of this, like corporate shit happening. There's these like pockets in town where people can afford to live and can afford to open a business. And I don't see that very much in the area that I live in um, because like there isn't like a protective community for a specific culture. Um, hey, it's Dave. And I quickly just wanted to jump in and say, if you've been enjoying the podcast and enjoying this episode, if you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, that will be so greatly appreciated. Because here's the thing. Someone might read that review and make the choice if they want to listen to the podcast. You get to help grow this podcast with us. How fucking cool is that? Let's jump back to today's episode. Um, that would allow you to, like, benefit off of each other to, you know, run a small business or, you know, live in a community where you could run a business like that. Like it, I don't know. I just, I mean, I, but no one can run a small business in LA. Like not, I mean, I did a tiny bit, but not like for real. It, it's really interesting because a lot of these small businesses, they're run by families. And sometimes these families are immigrants from other countries. And the work the amount of hours that's put in, like pretty much the 
they raise their families there. Yeah. You know, like their kids are constantly there. So these are really hardworking people that in a way, like they don't really have a retirement. You know, th their thing is just work, 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 and then hope one of their kids can take over so that they can maybe like take off a few days. But, you know, then you have these corporations that I, I love this idea. Well, it's owned by somebody. It's a franchisee. Okay. It's still a fucking McDonald's. All right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I get it that Mr. Richard Douglas owns it. It's still a McDonald's. So there's that side to it. It's like almost as if like you have one that holds all of the funds and ability to do whatever they want. And then you have the other side that's just like that person that just is just scraping by. You know, like there's no there's no comparison, really. Mm, it's gotten out of control. Like, I just don't even know. Uh, it's like the only option is to kind of like go, like try not to think about it or like don't go too deep into it. And like, that is such a red flag. <laughs> like, because honestly, like, <laughs> when you feel your mind saying like, no, 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 no. don't, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> That's my response to. Thank situation. you, listeners. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dead. <sighs> but like all seriousness though, it's like, it's just like the extra step of just appreciation of the community around you and, and like the businesses that kind of make it possible. Like even being down here, like there's been a lot of local businesses that I've interacted with. And it's sometimes some of the coolest experiences ever. I meet the coolest individuals that I've ever seen before, you know? And I wish uh, we had more local business. Like, I, I feel know. like it's important. I just don't really feel like I see a whole lot of that around here. Like there's a little bit here and there, but I feel like most of it was established like a while ago. Now I did go to this girl's bakery that she opened. Um, it was a macaroon bakery. I just Ooh. went there. So that is a small business. You know, but it's like oh, way ooh, yeah, back up, girl. Mm -hmm. you imagine mm -hmm. macaroons. You, you have even... to come. I, I'm like, you have to come visit, and I'll take you to the macaroon store. I'm making a list of all the things. I want to oh, take yeah. you to the Living History <clears throat> Farms, um, so that you can be Little House on the Prairie with me. Oh my God, am I going to be the one that's wearing the dress? Because, if you want to, yeah, I, <laughs> we'll really get, ex get everyone excited. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really exciting. I would be really excited. So, um, and then I feel like the oh, the macaroon store. Okay, so I got mom. I'm podcasting. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell me about the macaroons. I want to hear about the macaroons. <laughs> Right? I know. You'll have to cut this whole little part out. <laughs> no. Nah, well, we, we can if you want me to. You're going to have to because I look <laughs> like I'm 14. Are you 14, Carissa? I don't know. You got to tell me. <laughs> tell me why. Ain't nothing but a heartache. Tell me why. I don't know why I broke out into that song. I just thought it might feel appropriate for what's going on right now. And see, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so tell me about the macaroons, because now I'm getting like. Um. Okay, so they had a s'more macaroon, and it was like really, really good. Um, s'mores. It was like s'mores, s'mores macaroon, and okay. so it has like one piece on top and one piece on bottom, and then it had like a marshmallow piece and a chocolate piece, and then like some mm -hmm. graham cracker in it. Mm -hmm. So it was really good. Okay. But then I got a bomb pop macaroon. A, ooh. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. You want to, ooh. What, 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 is, what is a bomb pop macaroon? Oh, have you had macaroons before? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, it just is like bomb pop flavored. So, I don't I know think what that is, Carissa. You don't know what bomb pops are? You know, no. those red, white, and blue popsicles? 
Hold on. It's a rocket pop or a bomb rocket pop. Are they called bomb pops? Bomb pops. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I've bomb never pops? heard them. I've never oh heard them. God. I've never what heard are, them. What other people call them? Just popsicles? Red, white, and blue popsicles? Oh my god, yeah, there are called bomb pops. Interesting. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah, they're red, white, and blue. Uh-huh. Because they look like rockets, I think. Maybe. I don't know, but I love bomb pops. Like, absolutely love the. Do the you know they have part. extreme flavors? That sounds really good. Mm hmm. But I like the red, white, and blue ones. Um, but yeah, banana it, fudge. It was a bomb pop flavored macaroon. So um, I don't. Does it say what the flavors of bomb pops are? I think the it's like cherry and blue red, red like blue raspberry. But I don't know what the middle part of a bomb pop is, which is like kind of interesting. Um, I don't know. I just sent you the insane list of bomb pops. Because okay, so quick question: What is the name of that macaroon place in Iowa? It's called. Mm, here, I want to say it's like Good Day, but let me take a look. Um, Mac. Maroon. Okay, and this is in Des Moines, Iowa. Yeah, so she's a small business owner, and I met her at the bridal store. Yeah, it's called Good Day Des Moines. <laughs> Good Day DSM. Um, and there's a couple, I would say bakeries are something that still exists as far as small businesses. Um, but she bought her wedding dress at the bridal store that the, the shithole bridal store that I used to work at. Dum, dum, dum. Um, and <clears throat> she Great only, job, by the way, excellent. It was a fantastic place to work at. She only got um, that dress because the employees are good employees, but the ownership really, really fucked up. Um, oh wow! It's called Good Day uh, DSM. Interesting. Yeah, Good Day DSM. Yeah. So she started that business and she uh, ran it out of the mall for a minute, and then now she's got her own actual storefront. You know, like a real one. Okay, so it's in Ankeny. 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 Yeah, it's okay, a weird she's, name. She's closed on Monday and Tuesday. Interesting. Okay, but she's she's opened Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I think that it's possible that maybe she gets a lot of orders for events. Um, like people get macaroons for their weddings or different things along those lines. Like she'll make orders for, for people Whoa. to pick up. Well, I don't know why I can't see the list of the macaroons that are available. Hold on. I think it changes from time to time. You know, like, they don't always have the same ones. But I'm curious to see if, like, they had it on, like, DoorDash or something like that. Ooh, yeah. So if anybody is in the Iowa area, such as De Des Moines, um, there's GoodDayDSM.com. Be sure to check them out. Um, and if you're traveling there, be sure to check them out as well. Well, and then their Instagram is Good Day DSM, um, and you can see their hours and you oh can my see God, a lot of pictures beautiful. of the macaroons. Like, oh, this is amazing! See, these are the macaroons that I got. Wow, here. they have fruity pebbles and birthday cake. Yeah. Wow. I I got a. Um, this is amazing, and cream. Carissa. I got a cookies and cream that was really, really good. Like, oh my gosh. It just like melted in my Fabulous. mouth. Fabulous. Yeah. Now I got a half dozen for $16. Oof. That's not right? bad though. I mean, I mean, the thing is, is that there, like before I bought it, I was like, oh my gosh, it's a little steep. But then once I had it in my hand and I was looking at everything that went into it, like that s'mores one had all these different layers and then there's decoration on the outside. They have lemon cake. I mean, once I held it in my oh hand, my I was like, you know, this is actually really special. Like they have it's cotton worth it. candy flavor. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so this is on our list for when you come to visit. And 
I can't remember if there was anything else that we'd added to the list yet. Well, oh my God, they have peanut butter Rocky Road cookies. We are going right now. <laughs> There's uh, a movie well, theater out by there that's really nice, too. Mm, uh, we we have to wrap up, though. Yeah, I got to go to work in the morning. I started my new job. It's been good. Awesome. Yeah, I started my new job today, and then I am officially going to school next month. Yeah, I'm, I'm a kid again. I'm a kid again. But it's like, it's it's better school than kid school. Yeah, I'm going for automotive technology. Ooh. Yeah, very fancy stuff. So, we'll see how that goes. But We'll talk uh, more about that. Yeah, we will. We have more time. Um... <clears throat> Uh, just wanted to uh, give a little quick shout out. Uh, I mentioned this earlier. We have somebody that's going to be editing our episodes. So yay, yay! Very, 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 very exciting. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to check out Carissa, uh, you can find her on Instagram at American Groove Pod. And um, what else? Oh, I exist. I'm real. What? I have a pot. I have an Instagram page. I'm a real person. Yeah, Carissa is a real person. She's not artificial or a hologram. I can swear on the Bible. Um, and you can also uh, find us uh, Lost in the Groove. You can find us on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube at Lost in the Groove Pod. So with that, I'll catch you on the next one. I do not know what the fuck is going on, but we will figure that out. Catch me upset. How about that? Hey! Alright, fuck this. We'll catch you later. Bye. We're all about the artist. That is the whole purpose of this podcast, period. And you have a really valuable tool. You can share this with artists, people that are creative, someone that can uh, enjoy this podcast and really enjoy the experience of Lost in the Groove. So with that, let's jump back to today's episode, shall we? Hey, it's Dave, and I quickly just wanted to jump in and say if you've been enjoying the podcast, I'm enjoying this episode. If you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, that'll be so greatly appreciated. Because here's the thing. Someone might read that review and make the choice if they want to listen to the podcast. You get to help grow this podcast with us. How fucking cool is that? Let's jump back to today's episode.